Hey, what's up? John from VideoFort.com bringing you a new After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to be learning how to do some trigonometry with expressions. So, uh, taking you back to high school. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, this is what we're going to be making. Just a uh, little spiral glowing thing. And... Uh, you know, this can be used for lots of different stuff. I'm just going to be showing you guys a setup. And, uh, you know, I'll probably create a follow-up tutorial on how to do a dynamic intro or something using uh, this effect. But today we're just going to be getting this all set up and showing you how to apply a slider control to uh, tweak different elements of this expression and introduce you to a brand new expression using some trigonometry. So it'll be a really cool and you will probably be able to tell any girl at a bar using like pickup lines, hey, I, I don't know if you knew this or not, I do trigonometry on the daily. Yeah, I'm on the computer just, uh, you know, working with sine and cosine and making spirals. And they're probably going to think you're really awesome and, uh, you know, you, you'll have a happy life from there. But until then, you need to learn these. So let's uh, go ahead and go up to composition, new composition. And we will just uh, call this trig particles. How about that? Really awesome. And we'll just make it 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, duration of 10. If you guys want to set it up differently, you know, I'm not there checking on you. So, ooh. All right, so we'll say OK. And then we'll just immediately go up to layer, new, light. Now it's imperative that we call this light emitter because we're going to be using particular and we're going to be setting uh, the particles to emitter and that's like uh, the, or the lights and uh, we got to call our light emitter otherwise we won't have particles showing up on the screen. Also make sure to set it to point if it's not already there. If you want to change the color, go for it. You know, great. Cast shadows can be on. Awesome stuff. And uh, just go ahead and say, OK. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and go up to layer, new, solid. And we'll call this one particular. And if you're not already ahead of me, apply the particular effect to this solid. So I just typed in part in my effects and presets search panel there, and I'm just going to drop this right onto my solid. And if I move forward in time, we can see that particles are you know, starting to be born. So underneath emitter, we're going to change our emitter type to lights. And this is where it comes into the light being called emitter and all that. Um, I'll show you real quick. If we select our emitter and press P on our keyboard, let's go ahead and keyframe our position and then just move forward in time and uh, move this down and move it you know, over to the right maybe. And let's just move it all the way off the screen. We can reverse these real quick so that we just have that reverse action. And now you kind of notice that you know as I move forward, oh, look at that. The particles are following our light. So you know, if yours isn't rendering fast, we can go down here and just kind of change that to half, and that'll you know, render it quicker for you. But So you can see here, if we've got our emitter set to lights, the particles follow our light. So that's exactly what we want. Let's also go ahead and change all these values here to 0. So velocity is going to be 0. Velocity random is going to be 0. Velocity distribution, 0. Do you guys get the point? It's going to be zero. So now we've got a nice little light streak that goes straight across there. Super duper fancy. So when does the uh, geometry come into play? Well, I wanted to get this set up so that you guys could actually see the geometry going. Otherwise, we would just have you know a light and it'd be spinning around with nothing following it. So sweet. We're going to go on to our emitter. And let's go ahead and option click on our position. And that's going to give us our expression options. Now, 
if we click on this arrow here, we can go to JavaScript math. And you guys are gonna feel so smart knowing this or doing this. Like I feel so cool uh, just knowing that this is available to me and I can go back to my high school days and feel like I'm failing at math all over again. So we can choose math sine and math cosine. Those are the two that we're gonna be working with. Let's not worry about the rest of these for right now. And I'm just gonna click on math sine. And that's going to give us that. Pop it right into there. And I'm going to go to the beginning. So you can click to the uh, beginning of that. And I'm going to say x equals. So now x equals this equation here that we have set up. For value, I'm going to put in time. So that's like the length of our comp. And then I'm going to do the asterisk. And asterisk is like a multiplication symbol. So time times. And let's say, oh, 10 and that will be our frequency. So that's uh, the frequency of it spinning around. And then we'll go over to here and we'll do another multiplication symbol or asterisk, and that'll be times 50. And that one there is gonna be our amplitude. So that's how big of a circle it makes. And that makes sense, follow me so far. And just a little background, sine is going to be starting at zero and moving up to one. So let's go ahead and uh, put on a grid so you guys can kind of see what I'm saying here. Oh yeah, don't worry about that. I'm going to go view, show grid. And so like, let's say this is our zero point. So sine goes from zero to one. Oh look, that's our center point. So it'll go from our zero to one in like a looping fashion. Cosine is the opposite, where it starts at 1 and then goes down to negative 1 and back up and down. So, you know, not really too terribly important for you to know and understand that. If you took geometry in high school, you'd already know it. So, uh, you know, hopefully you're still in high school. Now, it's important to close off this expression with a semicolon because that's going to kind of end it for us. And we're going to hit Enter. And let's just go ahead and copy this. So we're just going to highlight that, do Command C if you're on a Mac, Control C if you're on a PC, and we'll just paste it. Now we're going to need to change this expression here. We don't want to have the exact same thing. That just doesn't work. You can't have two X values. So I'll click over here, and I'm going to delete the X and put Y. That'll put it on our Y axis. And then we'll just you know, click on over to Sign, and I'm going to delete Sign, and I'm going to write C-O-S, and that stands for, oops, not Z, S. COS, and that stands for cosine. Like I was just explaining, uh, cosine goes from one to negative one, sine starts at uh, zero and goes up to positive one, negative one. So it's just the starting points are different. Cosine starts at one, sine starts at zero. Uh, you know, big deal, I know that doesn't exactly make sense, but don't worry about that, I'm, I'm trying my best. So those are those values, and having one be sine and the other be cosine gives you the spiraling effect. So we'll hit enter, and now we just need to put in our z space values, our uh, expression. So we'll do z equals, and z is going to be our uh, time. So we'll do time times 100, because we want it to be sped up a little bit. And then go ahead and hit the semicolon to close off that expression. And last time, enter, and we're going to do brackets. So do a bracket here, and do x, comma, y, comma, z, and then close off that bracket, and do the plus symbol, value. And what that's going to do is it's going to make our x, y, and z's be the value over here, so that they're not you know set off in zero zero over there. Uh, best way for me to explain it. And so now if I scrub through, we get our nice spiral. How fancy. And you notice since we don't have it moving anymore, it just kind of stops there and is spinning around in a circle infinitely. So that's pretty cool. But let's say we want to control each one of these values, like the 10 and 50, Let's say we want to change those. So we can change the amplitude here to, you know, maybe 20 if we want. And then I'll go ahead and update, and then I'll change, you know, how our spiral looks. 
The only problem is, is we don't have a lot of control over these. You know, you can only have one set value inside this expression. So what we'll do is we're going to set up slider controls for each one of these values so that we can change them however we want and also keyframe them. So those of you who are you know, a little more comfortable with keyframing, this is where you're going to get to do that. You just needed to have this expression set up first, and now we're going to set up some slider controls so that we can just keyframe the hell out of that, get, get all up in that. So you know, that's why expressions are helpful. They uh, make animating way easier. You wouldn't be able to animate these spirals uh, by hand nearly as easily, and then also being able to change them as quickly, it, it just wouldn't happen. It's not realistic. But enough on that. Let's go ahead and add some slider controls. So we'll go up to Layer, New, and we'll create a new adjustment layer. And that's just going to be a blank layer that we can apply effects to. This works for anything. Uh, we're just going to be using it right now for the emitter. So we'll go over to our effects and presets panel and let's search for slider. S-L-I-D-E-R. Slider control. Sweet. Probably the best effect you can use. I, I don't know that. It's a great effect though. And we're going to need to have five of these because we've got five values down here that we want to change and alter. You know, we've got the X frequency, the X amplitude, the Y frequency, the Y amplitude, and then we also have the Z speed. So let's go ahead and make five slider controls. I'm just going to do Command D to duplicate these. So two, three, four, five. So now we've got five of them. Let's start renaming them. This first one I'm going to call X Freak. And Freak stands for frequency, not freak in the bed. And this one's going to be X Amp for amplitude. And this one will be Y frequency. And this one will be Y amplitude. And this final one will be Z speed. Awesome. And now we will start pick whipping to our slider controls. So go ahead and go into our expression here. Highlight 10. We'll grab our pick whip. And since we're highlighted on the X frequency, we'll slide up to the X frequency slider control. And that's going to give us that, replace it with this expression here. And if you go through and read it, it says times this comp. So that means this comp here. And it gives us the layer, adjustment layer, and it names it. So that's pretty much what it's saying here. It's telling you to go within this comp, and it has the layer, and it tells you the layer name to go into, and then it's saying the effect to go into, and then the name of you know that effect, which is X frequency, and then it's a slider, you know? So that's you know exactly what that expression says. It's just a bunch of words. It's called reading. You know, up and down, left to right, taking words to form sentences. Tylenol for headaches, might all for cramps. Okay, so now we're going to highlight 20, which is our X amplitude, and we'll pick whip to that slider control. Boom. Same thing. I'm not going to take us through it again. It's just going to replace it with that. And we'll just go through and change all of these. So now we're going to go to our Y frequency, pick whip that to our slider control. And there we have it. And then we'll go to our Y amplitude and pick whip to that. And then our Z speed and pick whip to that. Now something interesting is going to happen once you have all of those pick whipped. Notice how these all are, all are all set to zero. So since we have it pick whipped to go to these values, those are all going to be zero now and you're just going to get a straight line that shoots across. So if we go in and start modifying these individually, we can put this one back to 10, hit tab, and that will go to the next value, set that to 50, set this to 10, 50, and then 100. You notice we get the exact same animation back. Super nifty, cling. I don't know why I said that. All right, uh, where do we go from here? So from here, you can start going and messing with the particles. 
you can change the particle size. So I changed uh, the life to about 1.5, and that's how long the particles will stay alive for. I also increased the life randomness to 50%, just because I thought it would add some cool dynamics to it. You can also change the size to a different one. Uh, I'm going to crank it up to 9. And then I also want to change the size over life and the size random. So I'm going to make the size random 100%. And so they're all just going to be getting born at different sizes. And I also want to have them do this kind of arc where they go all the way up and then slowly go down. And that will give us you know, kind of a cool birthing effect. I'll change my uh, resolution up to full so you can see it better. I'm also going to take off the grid. We don't need that anymore. So now when I scrub through, you can kind of see I get a cool kind of Tinkerbell sparkling thing. You know, I know this is, you guys know that cool animation for certain companies where a fairy pops in and dinks off. Yeah. You just do that all day. Uh, for mine, I thought it would be funny, fun, not funny, fun to do like, you know, just color random, crank that up. And uh, also do a color over life. So if you do change here and do over life, that'll give you, you know, a crazy cool color. I really just did it so you can see a bunch of colors. You know, that's always fun, right? But, you know, from here, you guys can go into the adjustment layer, change all these different values and keyframe them to be different things. And you can also keyframe the light. You can add in a camera. You know, just make it 50 millimeter or whatever you want. If you guys know how to do all those cool presets, go for it. And, uh, you know, orbit the camera around. Because remember, these uh, particles are 3D, so you can set up a camera in 3D space if you want and create some really dynamic animations. So just think of all the effects that you can do. But yeah, go ahead, play around with it. Let us know how you're using it by posting your videos in the comments below. We want to see what you're doing with these effects and how you're using it. And stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to incorporate this into a cool title sequence uh, that you, know, you can kind of customize and create on your own. I hope this has been helpful and not daunting. You know, now you can uh, go pick up some ladies by saying, you know, trigonometry. Wow. Go over to videofort.com, check out some of our stock footage over there. Maybe you can throw this effect onto it and uh, do some cool Harry Potter stuff or whatever. That completes this tutorial for today. Have a great day, guys. Or not. The choice is yours. Later.